So I always was interested in understanding how things were made. So when I was a, a kid, I always loved to play with Lego blocks. So I would first follow the guide uh, to build the pre-designed models, but once it was done, I would quickly tear it apart and to create my own models, my own designs. And in a similar way, when I started learning music, I quickly got interested on how the pieces of music that I was performing, how were they made, uh, so that I can make my own pieces of music afterwards. So I started off by buying my first guitar when I was 13 years old and I was just playing like pop music. I had my bedroom in the basement like typical teen and at one point I discovered classical music by watching the movie Clockwork Orange and I decided like I love classical music, this is awesome, that's what I want to play. But uh, I only had an electric guitar and a rock band, so I started by making arrangements of classical music for electric guitar, bass, drum and keyboard. So by doing this arrangement, I kind of it helped me to understand how music is built, how music is composed. When I went to CJEP, I had to choose between either I want to continue electric guitar, then you have to study in jazz, or if I want to study classical music, I have to go in classical guitar. There was no program to play classical music on electric guitar. So I decided to, to go in jazz. And what I liked about jazz is that you learn to improvise. And when you improvise, you it's kind of a little spontaneous composition and you really have to learn to understand the music if you want to do improvisation because you have to understand that this scale can go with this chord and this chord can be substituted by this other chord so you really understand how music is made when you improvise. And uh, also in CGIP I took a film music course and uh, at the same time my sister was studying in animation in uh, university so I was doing the, uh, the film score of her short animated film and in university, um, afterwards, I continued studying composition. And at the time, my side job is that I was assistant for a composer. And I really learned a lot by being the assistant of a great composer. And uh, later on, when I finished university, I got a job as an in-house composer for the video game company Gameloft. And I worked for them for a few years and scored a lot of games for them. And afterwards, I left Gameloft, and now I work as a freelance uh, composer for video game. And I also do a lot of concert music as well. So I not only compose video game music, but I also compose concert music for orchestra mainly. And often my compositions are inspired by everyday life. For example, one day I went into a chocolate shop and I was reading the description of the chocolate and it was talking about texture, about contrast, about mix of flavor. And I found it was really interesting because in music we also have, you know, contrast and texture and mix of flavor. So I thought, the, I got the idea, why don't I write a piece following descriptions of a chocolate, of chocolate. So this is the piece Symphonic Chocolates. It's a, 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 little, a mini symphony in four movements and each movement evokes a different flavor of chocolate. Caramel is very soft and lyrical, coffee is really upbeat and so on. And when the orchestra plays the piece, the audience has a box with the four chocolate and they can eat each chocolate as the music is being performed. So it's really a kind of a pairing in, of music and chocolate experience. Uh, I did also a composition for the Toronto Symphony Orchestra, which is called United Anthem. It was for the 150th anniversary of Canada. And it's a short piece of two minutes and a half, and you hear excerpts of many anthems from all over the world played stacked together as a kind of a mosaic. Um, and also sometimes I combine my two worlds, which is video game music and concert music. For example, I wrote a piece called Beach Ball Games, which is kind of a crowd game. So the audience has a giant beach ball that they can move around in the crowd and there's a screen on top of the orchestra and on the screen you see the representation of that beach ball and you see stars and meteorites and the audience has to control that beach ball on the screen by moving the giant beach ball in the audience and the orchestra has to follow the performance of the player. So if the, we catch a star, you hear the doing, and if they hit the meteorite, you hear the boom. And if there's not enough of time left, the music will go faster. And if they win or lose, you will hear the win jingle or the, the uh, lose jingle. So the daily life of a video game composer is really being part of a team. So usually I will start by playing the video game on which I work with the team that's developing the game. And we will talk about the game, we will talk about what is the music that is needed for that game, what are the different paths that the player can take. 
um, so that I can understand what kind of interactive music is needed for that game. And then I will start composing the music. And as soon as I have already a little bit of music composed, we will integrate it in the game. And I'll go back to the company and we'll play the game together and see does the music match well, uh, the intention, what was the vision of the team, you know, the music reference that we listened together, does everything work well? If yes, I continue in that direction. If not, I rework that music and so on. We continue in that kind of creative loop. Video game is very important for Montreal. There is more than 200 video game studios uh, in Montreal. So that ranges from big triple A studios to small indie studios. So uh, it makes it very convenient for composers that are in Montreal and works on video games because we can go directly in the studio, play the video game with the company, when the people of the company who works on the game, talk, share ideas, we're on the, on the same time zone, um, and so on. So it makes it very convenient to work in video game music if you're in a city that has a lot of studios of video game music. Otherwise, I've also worked on a lot of games that were, I'm actually currently working on a game that's developed in France. So by, with internet, we're able to work by distance, but it's sure that it's so much fun to be in the same city and be able to meet in person and play the games with the people you're developing the game. So my favorite video game composer is probably Koji Kondo. So he composed the music of all my childhood favorite video games. So for sure, he holds a really special place in my heart. And I think he influenced me as a composer because uh, to, to write like strong thematic themes, which is always something that I try to do in my composition, whether it's video game music or concert music.